Hey, Patreon contributors. Thanks for joining us over here at uh, the spoiler talk for the Frank Bill book, The Savage. And I feel like there's going to be at least a few things that we have to talk about because this book got crazy. I really love that it all came back to a bare knuckles fight. Like Donnie Brooks started all this. <laughs> yep. And Donnie Brook essentially ends all of it. Yeah. So I, I kind of thought that was a nice full circle. Yeah, it was it was so comfortable because I mean, like I said in the regular review, I didn't realize that it was a sequel to Donnie Brook. And so when I figured out that that's essentially what was going on. Um, so basically when the first Donnie Brook character showed up, I was like, all right, I'm going to the internet. And I found out, oh, okay. So now I know what I'm, that's going on. That being said, um, yeah, the fact like, and in the way that that end scene kind of played out, not end scene, but like the, the kind of final fracas, um, uh, I, I thought in my head, I was reading this and I was like, oh, I know what this is. Someone was read Donnie Brook and they were like, well, how do you get, how do you go? How do you take this to the next level? And he's like, well, the world's got to end first. And then that's what we got. It's a really weird sequel in that I'm trying to think of like what to equate it to. It's like, like if you had the movie Clerks, right? And you just had the movie Clerks. Yeah. And then there's the end of the world. And then you did Clerks too. <laughs> right. Exactly. Like I, I can't, I, I don't know if there's a precedent for this type of thing where like the, the follow-up includes like the end of the world where you'd never, it, it was never something that was ever telegraphed in Donnybrook. It was never something that was foreshadowed in any way. Hmm. Donnybrook was just Donnybrook. And then all of a sudden, no, and, I'm, and I'm sure they talked about like people being on hard times and stuff. Cause I mean, let's yeah. face it. Some of these guys were trying to make their living by, you know, busting each other's heads open. So there's probably yep. a little bit of times are tough in, in Donnybrook, but yeah, it was really weird. I will say that, that in the back of my mind, I can't come up with an example. We've probably seen the exact opposite of this though. Like the, oh, you know what? I'll, I'll go back to the, the Walking Dead for, you know, as, as kind of example. Their spinoff show, Fear the Walking yeah. Dead, started like the day before the zombie breakout happened. So with the Walking Dead, everything is done and gone by the time we're tuned in. You know, there there are no more police services or electric, you know, all of that's gone. But then you kind of go back. So I think that it's been done where we've seen the apocalypse, but then went back to revisit people before it. Yeah. More so than, than what happened in this particular book. Yeah, it's pretty wild, but I like it a lot. <laughs> um, so, so the end. Electricity is restored, and that's really <laughs> what saves everybody from killing each other. It's is, is a little weird. That right? was so great. Because it like, it, <laughs> for some reason, that matters, you know? Like, after everything that's happened, like the fucking uh like the tornado sirens start going off and everybody's like oh uh it's the rapture oh we sh we've been assholes and then like everything goes you know starts to go back to normal well and um, that's exactly what happens because there's there's that guy from the government or whatever shows up and says oh we're really sorry we're, we're gonna try to get you people all set back up and stuff and it's almost <laughs> like you got the impression that of the entire United States was like this. And they did make mentions of cities and stuff and they had, you know, kind of society breaking down a little bit, but it seems like just out in the sticks, it just went so much fucking farther. Right. <laughs> like it just went anywhere else. Yeah. And that was like, that was the gorgeous kind of like when you step back and you frame the whole idea in your mind, it didn't take long. I think that the, from the, from the time that the, the dollar um, lost all its value, which was, was what caused the downfall of the country and everything um, to when the mil when the military people show up and the lights go on, it's like two years. And like in that time, all this just nonstop murder and violence and like basically establishing like this really brutal society. I mean, it, it didn't take long for them to just go to like the very like extreme edge of like, how awful can you be? And I don't know that it would, to be really honest with you. Um, when you think about the locale, so w when you think about rural areas, um, you know, it's probably a lot easier to see everybody as a threat when you get into a situation like that. I mean, I think there's kind of like a safety and numbers thing that would happen in bigger cities. Yeah. But when it's just you and your kin, not to, you know, not to take too much verbiage from the book, but, you know, when it's just you and your kin, 
it could probably be pretty easy to become very defensive. And then the more defensive you become about things, the more uh, offensive you become about them. So I could see it not taking a lot to, to turn to this kind of clicky system where it's you and your family and like, you know, that one like best friend have now created some kind of gang. Not only it starts to protect yourselves, but then it expands to like survival. Yeah, it's just so much death. So much death. There, there was a lot of death and all of it was just goddamn brutal. Every little bit of it. I like that um, Chainsaw Angus, because of his time with Fu, had this like weird like I could bump into you and like explode your organs kind of thing. Weird like that knowledge of how to kill people. Yeah. Like in, um, did you ever, I don't remember what it was called, but it was that thing, uh, in, in the kill bill movies where she does this weird move. And then after he walks like five steps, his heart explodes. No, I, I, I think I saw the first movie and it just really wasn't for me. I don't think I paid much attention to it. Oh, uh, well, spoilers. Um, that just reminded me of like, yeah, it was like this weird, <laughs> like, he bumped into a dude like he bumped into a dude at a restaurant and then that guy like died in the parking lot five minutes later or something yeah it was great we'll say they mentioned that that foo was uh in i think they mentioned he was acupuncturist right yeah he was acupuncturing the the angus's hand a lot Mm -hmm. it's totally unrelated but i've been watching outlander the tv show on stars which is a uh it's a it's a weird it's like a time travel movie that has very little to do with time or TV show has very little to do with time travel like they don't use it as a tool very yeah. much. Uh, but there's this great scene where there is a guy who I believe is Chinese, um, in Scotland 250 years ago. But they're, they're on a boat and the main character Jamie is is very ill. He's been ill for weeks with with uh, motion sickness or, or seasick or whatever you call it. So at one point, you know, he's been feeling much better. His wife has been making him this this uh, ginger soup or ginger tea or something, and she finally thinks it's paying off, but she walks in on this scene, and your first impulse is you think that he's having sex with somebody. But it's this Chinese guy, and as, as Jamie turns around, he's got like 18 pins sticking out of his face. <laughs> it's just this great scene because <laughs> he was so embarrassed by doing this thing that he didn't want anyone to know. <laughs> so they're kind of doing it. At any rate, it, it was a funny acupuncturist Chinese guy scene, I guess. The that that show, um, I haven't seen it, but I, there's like a person who I work with who was talking about it, and um, uh, in our in our like the break room area where I work, there's computers, so people watch like Netflix and stuff all the time, and like she's totally watching that on one of her like lunch breaks, and there's just like boobs on the screen, and I was like, I don't know, if you should be watching this at work, <laughs> boobs, boobs, it is. Uh, what else you got about this uh, this book? I really, I, I guess, I guess I, I want to say that, um, I, I like the fact that the power went on and everything was kind of going back, to, <laughs> going back to normal. I think that that was something that I didn't expect. I figured that, like, you know, the the power, the the economy collapsed, the power goes off, and then we're just like doomed to this hell, and that's what everybody just assumes. And um, and so I had no idea that it was coming, and I, I was so happy when it did. And, um, like, cause like you have to imagine, I like, cause it, it had forced me to imagine like, well, what's going to happen to these people who like, it, you know, were tortured, um, turned into like sex slaves who killed people, you know, and they're going to have to go back to a normal modern society. Mm-hmm. How do they, how do they cope? There's going to, you know, I like, wonder that would make for a good comedy. <laughs> I do want, you know what it actually really would. <laughs> <laughs> I do wonder a little bit how much of that might be lost. How many readers may not get that, that things weren't nearly as bad as they thought kind of situation. Yeah. You, you know what I mean? So I, I don't know. I thought it was a great way to, to end the book. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think that might be lost on some people. I don't know. For sure. All right. Um, that's going to wrap it up for spoiler talk for Frank Bill's The Savage. Um, but next book we do, I don't know when that's going to be, but it'll probably be more spoiler talk. So, uh, check back, uh, check back in a couple of weeks.